This is the eighth in a series of short videos designed to give more confidence to medical students and non-specialist doctors when assessing patients with eye problems. We have already established how to take a structured history and how to test the visual acuity. We know that the eye needs to be examined in an anatomical fashion from front to back and we're going to concentrate on the iris examination now. There are only two reasons to examine the iris for non-specialists. Number one is to ensure that the pupil formed by the iris is round. If the pupil is not round, it may signify active or previous trauma, active or previous inflammation. The other thing we need to check is that the iris is equal in both eyes. If you notice that one pupil is larger than the other by more than one millimetre, this might signify non-significant disease such as previous inflammation, previous trauma or previous Aedes pupil. However, if the larger pupil is associated with a ptosis, that is to say a droopy eyelid, and particularly if there is a misalignment of the eyes causing double vision, you should search for a cause of a third nerve palsy, such as though that due to a brain tumour or a berry aneurysm of the circle of Willis. If there is a ptosis, that's a, a droopy eyelid, on the side of the smaller pupil, such as in this patient, you need to look for a cause of Horner's syndrome, which may be due to a lesion in any part of the sympathetic pathway from hypothalamus down past the neck to the apex of the lung and back up into the eye. And that really is all you need to say about the iris on your routine examination of your patient's eye. Thus, if all is normal, you can just state that the iris is round and reactive and the pupils are of equal size. That concludes the examination of the structure of the iris, but not the function of the iris. By contrast, if you are performing a neurological examination, looking at the function of the optic nerve, then you do need to look at the reaction of the pupils to a bright beam of light. That is covered in a different video on neuro-ophthalmology examination, and I'll post a link to that at the end of this video.